early in my bonsai career, I, uh, I wanted big, old, fabulous junipers and couldn't afford the initial stock. Plus, I'm very impatient, so I wasn't willing to wait. So what I did was I saw an article on Tanuki and uh, said, I can do that. I'm a carpenter by trade, so I'm very familiar with power tools and what have you. And I was able to acquire a couple of junipers that had long bendable trunks. And then I acquired a great old piece of wood. Tanuki is uh, a word in Japanese that means the trickster. Um, I'm a trickster. I want to stress finding a fabulous piece of wood is paramount if you're going to go through all this trouble. Doing, doing a tanuki on a boring piece of wood is a big fat waste of time. Uh, you got to get a good piece of wood, which is attainable, but you may have to search a little for the right one. But um, if you acquire the, the good components, uh, you'll have a fabulous outcome. Tanuki's, it's fun. It improves your skills. Sometimes you have to cheat a little to uh, uh, achieve those skill or uh, achieve the good product. But um, it's a fabulous way to give yourself extra knowledge in bonsai. And the good thing about Tanuki, anything goes. You can cheat your way from here to heaven and get away with it as long as you uh, you tell people it's a tanuki. You can see here is where the juniper goes up. It winds into a channel, comes up here, and actually the juniper from the front is this one, and the juniper from the back is this one, which chases up the other side of the piece of dead wood. So without further ado, let's uh, get on to doing some more work and uh, bring that piece of dead wood to life. Uh, okay, here we have a fabulous piece of dead wood and uh, we've done quite a bit of prep work to this piece of wood. Made this a little more interesting here. We've stripped the bark off this area. Got rid of a lot of the tool marks. Uh, a little more refinement will probably be necessary. The juniper that we've attained is, is going to end up being about this tall. So the apex will be in this neighborhood. Uh, we have branches that we've actually removed off of the juniper to allow the trunk to flow with the, the old lifeline, but this tree could be, or this piece of wood, I should say, could be 500 years, maybe older. As far as uh, dead wood cleanup and wood preparation before the juniper is mated to the wood, uh, you want to do 95% of the dead wood work before you nail the juniper onto it. If for no other reason, it's just easier to get to the wood uh, without a juniper in the way. Then uh, a wire wheel to most of the wood to eliminate any, you know, a lot of times once wood's laying around, it gets the, the green algae on it. Uh, you want to get most of that off because when you're putting the lime sulfur on, it uh, mixes with that algae, makes the algae go over the whole piece of wood. So you want to get the wood pretty clean. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but you want the, uh, most of the wood pretty sanitary. So once your wood is all pre prepared, 
Um, what I've found is getting the wood uh, just lightly moist. You just spray the wood and get it damp. What works really good is a little water bottle, water bottle that you just cut the bottom off. Use that as a little reservoir. And you should probably have a detail brush as well. Um, so you paint that on and as the moisture dries out of the wood, it makes the lime sulfur turn white just quicker than it would without the water. Uh, once again, I'm very impatient, so I'm always striving for the quickest process. Once the wood's all prepped, then you're, uh, you're ready to employ the nail guns. Uh, Eric shot a couple pictures of the nail guns that I use. Uh, this, this trunk was probably an inch, inch and a quarter thick. So I used two and a half inch nails, finished nails, shot through the trunk and into the deadwood. Uh, so when repotting is necessary, you pull it out of the pot and it's all one piece. Uh, hopefully after, uh, once it's ready for the next repotting, this rock could probably come out and uh, the roots would support this side. I just use this as a wedge uh, for now because it's really important that the, the tree doesn't move around so those roots get established and not be any more stressed than they already are. So once, once the marriage is complete, um, that's about it. I, I do recommend that you you let the juniper relax and get growing and survive all the brutality we've thrown at it. And then once you see it growing, you know, probably May or June, put a nice uh, pro wire job on it and uh, just enjoy the view. Um, but it's, uh, it's a, it's a fun subject in bonsai, and I gotta believe there's a lot of people out there that were like me, that can't really afford the really old junipers because those, those collected trees now are literally thousands of dollars raw before you even start. So uh, it's a big investment to get the real McCoy. This is a way around, getting around that. In the future, when it's repotted, comes out of the pot as one piece once the root ball fills out and uh, will be maintained as any other bonsai. But in the beginning, it's important to uh, not make the roots stress to grow. Uh, we've got a rock right here supporting the deadwood. There's not a lot of rootage over on this side of it. Um, this rock will be camouflaged with some of my fabulous moss. Uh, we might leave a little bit of it exposed. Uh, I want to really accentuate this, uh, what was the old live branch that didn't survive. Uh, but this is obviously centuries old, literally. Um, it's a great piece of wood, really is. Uh, hence the 
resurrection of this piece of wood. Um, I guess you could call it playing God, but uh, this is uh, this is going to be a good piece. I'm always on the hunt for a long uh, whip, not a whip, but um, you know, a ten-year-old juniper that's two or three feet tall that you can still bend and manipulate maybe into a channel that you've carved in the wood that will follow that channel easily. Um, but you know, shimpaku is certainly the the species of choice for for uh, tanuki, uh, mainly because you know this is what junipers, really old junipers, look like. Good luck hunting for deadwood and junipers. Uh, you know it seems like it's an easy uh, easy project to locate both. Trust me, it's not. Uh, and and seems like when you find one, it's hard to find the other or the other way around. It's a great exercise in bonsai, and you you end up with a with a great piece of artwork. Uh, I know there's most people would be proud to have this in their garden, uh, as I am of the the ones that I've already built. Another uh, method of what I call tanukifying. You know, a lot of times you have a tree that's boring. It's probably always going to be boring. So, you know, if it's a tree that's kind of ho-hum, but has possibilities, if pieces are added to it, why not? Uh, this was a very, very boring, young cork bark pine that was just kind of a half a horseshoe. And now granted, I've wired it and spread the branches apart. This branch went all the way out to here. This one went all the way out to there. What I did was I tightened up the, the foliage masses but it was still pretty boring. It was all right, but it had bad reverse taper here and didn't have much character, I didn't think, for a cork bark pine. This right here was, a, was an old branch that I nailed through here and through there. So this took care of the reverse taper problem. This was the most boring part of the tree through here, so this through here was an old branch, nail, nail, that I just added on to it. I had to carve it a little before I nailed it on, but you really can't tell that that was added on. And then I've always been a fan of the rising dragon look. This was my, my, uh, my rising dragon attempt at enhancing the upper part of the tree. Uh, I just showed this tree um, of, of course, telling people that I added these on, but just one more way, you can enhance your trees. Granted, it's cheating a little, but this tree looks 20 times better than it ever would or will um, because of the boring half a horseshoe structure, uh, which was the way it grew. So uh, another, another technique in Tanuki. Don't be afraid to do a little cheating, because Tanuki is cheating. Uh, for uh, Tanuclear, adios.